Hello and welcome back to the channel. We are back with another fantastic Briefs trailer breakdown. We have been so lucky recently with the amount of trailers and featurettes that we've been receiving for the upcoming movie and there is even more for me to break down today. We are going to be looking into the two featurettes that we got. The first one was called Even More Fantastic Beasts and the second one was called The Magic of Hogwarts. And we also got a look at the full scene for the room we require. So we'll be looking into that and seeing what we can find in this footage. Again, I just want to say thank you to everyone who has supported the channel. The growth has been absolutely phenomenal. And the support and the nice comments I've been receiving has just absolutely blown my mind. So I can't thank you all enough. I just want you to know how much I do appreciate all of the support. If you do like these sorts of breakdowns please check out my previous videos where i have broken down all of the trailers and the tv spots that we have received for this film so far and i've found all the sequels i can find in them i've also made several predictions about the upcoming movie and we will see how correct i am after the movie comes out i will link all of these videos in the description below so the first featurette I want to take a look at is going to be the Magic of Hogwarts featurette. And I think most of the scenes from this that are new or slightly different angles are actually all part of one scene. And I've managed to rejig them about and put them in the order that I believe they are actually going to be in in the film because they seem to have been intentionally put out of order for the trailer. So the footage you're about to see is going to be in the order that I believe we are going to see these things happening. So the first shot we get is a slightly extended shot of the pan around the camera into the front courtyard in front of the Great Hall. And you can see two figures making their way across the courtyard. I believe these two figures are going to be Newt and Theseus because the next scene that we cut to is in the Great Hall and it starts off with Eulali sat at the table with a student and Newt and Theseus walking in the entrance to the Great Hall. I love the fact that Eulali is sat with the students because obviously she's a teacher all the morning herself so she would have a natural inclination to be with the students and help them. We then see Newt and Theseus approach Eulali and they start to have a discussion you can see Eulali has a newspaper which she hands to Newt. Now, in one of the original shots, I thought this newspaper said murdering muggles. And I thought it was going to be a report about how bad Grindelwald was and the fact that he is murdering lots of muggles and his plan is to obviously overthrow them. However, in this scene here, we actually get a better shot of what the paper said. And it looks like it says murderous muggles. So this paper is actually portraying the situation the complete opposite to what I thought it was going to be. And it actually seems to be more portraying the side of Grindelwald and showing the muggles in a bad light. Now we know that this film is going to be set just before World War II. So the newspaper could be portraying some of the incidents that we see around World War II and the fact that all of the muggles are going to war with each other. And Grindelwald is obviously going to use this to bring people into his movement and his way of thinking. We then get the further shots of Jacob talking to the students and all of the gang then heading to the front of the Great Hall. During this time, Jacob mentions that he has been given some sweets by the Slytherins and it turns out that they are cockroach clusters. The students then begin to file out of the Great Hall and the gang begins to hatch their plan of how to defeat Grindelwald. And I believe this is going to be in the lead up to the final battle. Also for noting in this scene it looks as though McGonagall does join the gang at some point during this scene to be part of the preparations. One more thing I would like to draw your attention to in this scene is the scarf that is at Theseus's waist. We see this featured a lot in the next featurette. In the even more fantastic beast featurette, we get confirmations of the names of most of the animals involved in this film. So we get confirmation that the flying creature we see in the Chinese forests is actually going to be a wyvern. It is described as a small bird-like creature with gigantic wings. Now we get several shots of this creature and it appears to be able to either change size or we do see a younger version of it in the film. In these shots we can clearly see there is a smooth reptilian body but it appears to have some sort of bird-like beak. 
Also for noting is it does appear to have two sets of wings. In this shot here you can see these smaller red, orange and blue wings that it seems to use in more confined spaces and tucked to the side of the body is its large wings that we can see it using in this scene when it expands its full wings and takes flight while holding on to Newt. The next creature that this trailer mentions is actually the Phoenix and it is referred to as a he which is leading more to the theory that potentially this could be Forks. When they are talking about the Phoenix they do say as it does seem to care for Credence and want to help him. So this does lead more to the theory that potentially Credence is a Dumbledore as Phoenixes always appear to a Dumbledore in need. We then get confirmation of what I predicted from one of the original trailers and that is that these little crab like creatures are actually manticores. And in this shot you get a clearer look at the manticore and it does appear to resemble the giant one that we see further down in the cabin. Also in these shots you get a clearer view of what I believe to be a fairy inside this lantern which is what is causing the illumination for Newt in this cave. Now my prediction is that this scene is going to result in Newt and Theseus being captured and leading to what we see in the next sequence of clips. The next sequence of clips shows a character that we already know and that is Pickett and it also shows the Niffler which has been named Teddy. Now these scenes again in this trailer were out of sequence so I have put them into the sequence I believe they are going to be in in the film and it starts off with Teddy the Niffler trying to get this scarf which is actually Theseus's scarf from the last scene off of the neck of this man here. Now I believe this person is going to be some sort of caretaker that's just been given the job to look after the captured Newt and Theseus and Newt has sent in his fantastic beast to come and help them escape. So as Teddy pulls on this scarf it appears like the male wizard wakes up and is startled by him. After this we then see the next shot and I believe this is the next shot because Teddy already appears to have the scarf. And you can see it picking up on the top shelf of this cabinet, finding Newt's wand. I love this scene because it looks as though Teddy is trying to jump to catch Pickett and save him. However, he, as all Nifflers are, are only interested in the gold that is falling down around Pickett and he is flying up to catch on to this gold galleon. He then leaves Pickett to fall to the floor. The next scene we see is Teddy running with Pickett on his back. Teddy has Theseus's scarf in his mouth and Pickett has Newt's wand. It appears as though Teddy gets hit with either a stunning spell or maybe even the tripping jinx. This causes it Pickett to fly through the air, I believe in the direction of Newt. We then see Newt using the Accio charm on Teddy and the scarf and bringing them both towards him. Now my theory is, is this scarf is actually a port key to get them away from this location. And it would appear that throughout this movie they are going to be using port keys quite a lot. So while we are on the topic of the Fantastic Beast, we are going to look into the Room of Requirements scene that we got this week. And it also confirms the name of another creature. And that is the horse-like creature that we see in the forest. Initially, I thought the forest were Brazil. However, I believe this creature is going to be native to China. The creature is called a chilling. And in my predictions for the film, I have suggested this creature is going to be very important to either destroying the Blood Pact or bringing down Grindelwald. This scene has given me great hope that my theory is going to be correct because it would appear that the chilling is going to be hiding within one of these suitcases. As the characters move in to the room of requirements, there are five suitcases which are made to look like Newt's suitcase to the point that he can't even tell them apart. I don't know whether this has been done in a manual sense or whether they've just used the Gemino charm, but inside one of these chests is going to be the chilling. Now there are six characters in this room and there are only five chests, but we actually do know which character doesn't take a chest from one of the previous trailers, and that is Dumbledore. In this scene you can see him take Jacob's hand. His hand is empty and his other hand is touching the teleportation device. You then also see that Jacob has the briefcase on him. I do not know if this is in relation to the blood pact because we do know that later on after the scene he still is not actively engaging Grindelwald. So maybe the fact of even carrying this suitcase would be classed as going against him which is something that he cannot do. 
So there you have it. That is the breakdown of the new featurettes that we've got and the full room we require scene. Let me know what you think of my breakdown in the comments section below and also let me know if you think I've missed anything. It has been very mad on this channel. I've just been pumping out videos as soon as I've made them, but I'm going to be hopefully now getting back into more of a routine and we will be looking to release videos every Sunday and every Wednesday. And that will be again based around the Wizarding World. We will be looking at anything else we get released for Fantastic Beasts and I still have a lot more analysis to do for the Hogwarts Legacy game. If that sounds like anything you're interested in, then please consider subscribing to the channel. It really does cost you nothing and it helps me out so much. But as I said at the beginning, I cannot explain how much I appreciate all of the support that I've been getting from you guys on this channel and all of the nice comments I've been receiving. But that was the end of this video and I really look forward to seeing you in the next one. And until then, mischief managed.